Hello, Lisa here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if this is your first time visiting. I am super stoked to be able to get into this with all of y'all. So you can probably see on camera, but this is the Wisdom of Pooh Tarot Christopher Robin box set. Y'all, I have so much to say about this deck. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna go card by card. We're gonna look at all the things. Um, Serafina and Angel sent, look at they sent the Pooh plush. I was really blown away that this deck, there was even an option that you could get a, a plush. I cannot even imagine what went into creating a plush of this deck, but it's so cute. It's the fool. He's got the little butterfly on his nose and his little satchel over his shoulder and he's so soft, but he's firm. I don't know. He's super cute. I wish, I wish I could pose him some, I could probably stand him up like against something. He'd probably look really cute standing. Now I want to see, hold on. We're just going to test it. We're going <laughs> to, not me playing with toys before. Look, he would look so cute standing up. I know you can't really see. He looks really freaking cute standing up. Okay. I'm going to have to put him somewhere where I can stand him up because he is stinking adorable. How cute is that? How cute is that? His little belly. I just want to like scritchy it. Okay. I'm just a child. Don't mind me. I'm just, I'm just going to be a child. We're going to put, we're going to put Pooh over here. Actually, we got to keep him out of the way for a second because we got to look at this box. So this is the box set that you can get. I believe that the pre-orders are open now and I'm pretty sure that you can still get the set. If not, well, either way, I will link the entire web shop. Before we get into this, please know this was sent to me for the purposes of sharing it with you. And the team over at Ruined Vervain also gave me a coupon code. The coupon code is UNICORNFAM5 and it is good through May 2nd. So if you buy anything from the Ruined Vervain, any poo purchase, I think it has to be a poo related purchase, you can get $5 off with that coupon code. So I will put that in the description box for you so that you can use that as well as a link to the web shop. So as far as I know, I was in the one of the later batches of shipping, I believe. So uh, this came in, I think they're still wrapping up Kickstarter fulfillment, but once that's done, I'm assuming they're gonna then be working on pre-order fulfillment from their web shop. So anyways, that's the sort of like nitty gritty of the details that you probably need to know right up front. Um, but there is a standard size deck. There's a mini and a tin. We're going to look at it all together today, but this is the, this is the really nice box that comes in the box set and it's got a really nice like finish on it. It feels like a smooth mat, like a matte lamination. It's really nice. This has quotes all the way around it. So on the bottom of the box here, the bottom edge, it says one thing you should know, no matter where I go, we'll always be together. That's a Christopher Robin quote. Um, we have some beautiful leaf work here. And then on this side, if you live to be a hundred, I hope I live to be a hundred minus one day so that I never have to live a day without you. That's Winnie the Pooh. And then on the back, you get the sort of write up and what's included in the set and on the spine. Like this would look so cute on a shelf. I don't even know. I don't, it's such a cute box. Oh my God. Wait till you see the inside. Hold on. Look at this. You get the wheel card on this image and then it folds all the way open. I don't want to drop anything. Look at this. It's a whole map of the 100 acre wood. The only other um, thing in our world that I've ever seen with this kind of a setup is the Citadel, which had a magnetic box that opened up into a map like this. And I just think it's the coolest. Look at all these illustrations. So the artist of this deck is Cat Amsel. Cat L. Amsel. I believe it's also on the front. Yeah. Illustrated by Cat L. Amsel. Um, so that is who did the illustrations. If you haven't seen it yet, Kat Amsel illustrated the Glitter and Gators graphic that is on Danny and my intro in Glitter and Gators. That was actually a really kind gift from Serafina and Angel. And I just, we love it. It's so cute. And Kat's artwork is delightful. And I think, I didn't know this, but I think the artwork is a mix. It says that, it says it on here somewhere. The art is actually a mix. I can't remember where I read it. Of classic illustrations from the original, um, illustrator of the Winnie the Pooh stories, whose name I forget, I'm so sorry, and uh, Kat's original artwork. So it's kind of, it's a combo, but here's what's amazing. I cannot literally tell at all the difference between Kat's artwork and any original artwork. I mean, I can see some iconic scenes. So those I would assume are maybe original, but like art wise, I can't tell. And that is saying something because I have such a hard time bonding with like collaborative decks, decks that um, have multiple artists because they sometimes don't feel very cohesive. This feels incredibly cohesive. I actually had no idea. I thought it was all original artwork um, because it all just looked so 
seamless and cohesive from everything I've seen online until, and then I found out. So anyways, we're gonna get into this. So again, this is the Christopher Robin box set. There's extra goodies in here. I don't, I'm not 100% sure what goodies come in the box. Actually, no, yes I do, because it says in the back. So what actually comes in the Christopher Robin box is the standard size tarot deck in a box, the mini deck in a tin, the cloth, and the bag. So that's what usually comes in here. There are some extra goodies sitting in my box because they came in an extra set. We're going to talk more about those as well. But, oh my god, it's amazing. Okay, so first of all, there are three prints, four prints. So we have the Eight of Swords. I don't know what card that is, but I'll find out when I go through the deck. The Fool, which is so cute and matches the, it matches the blush. Look at it. Look at it. And uh, Ace of Pentacles, maybe? Not sure. We'll find out again when we go through the deck. But these are on like sturdy cardstock. These are really nice. And these came kind of bundled together in plastic. I've opened everything just to make it easier to get into it. And then we also get a deep dive into the Wisdom of Pooh Tarot like information card. So this is the deck. Oh, it's a two-sided information card. So this is the stuff that is coming. So I know that it was estimated for first quarter 2024. Things are running a little bit behind, I think, on the production schedule. But this is a hardbound, beautiful, if you go to um, Serafina, I think if you just go to the Ruin Vervain Instagram account, which I will try to remember to also link down below, You'll be able to see some some previews of this, but it looks really beautiful, like a really nice decorative, like hardbound book with big color illustrations in it. And just, it's what it says that is a deep dive into the wisdom of Pooh Tarot. The deck that comes in here does not have an included guidebook of any kind that I can see. I don't know if there's a digital that I missed, but the guidebook is gonna be something they're gonna sell as a, a separate thing later when they have this all ready to go. This, it, pictured here on the card, this little thing here, is the Expotition, which is a astrological journal with a bunch of spreads that I got to collaborate with them on, which is really amazing. I got to contribute some spreads to that. So I'm super excited to see what that looks like when it comes out. And I think we're seeing some extra goodies over here. Anyways, this is coming. And then if you didn't already know, the Wisdom of Pooh and Tigger 2 edition is gonna be coming. This says it's coming to Kickstarter this spring, which, oh my God, is so soon. That's amazing. I don't know when it's actually officially hitting, but this is coming. So I'm really excited to see what this edition is gonna look like because I love Tigger. I'm excited to see how this develops. Okay, so let's set these things aside. So they also sent me the coin. I don't think this is usually included. It's not on the back of the box. So I think this was an extra that they sent me and oh my God, y'all. Uh, this is so stinking cute and it's they did a really good job picking the metal for this. Oh my gosh Can I not get into it? So I remember from a, a previous Kickstarter. I don't know whose it was. It might have been one of um, It might have been I'm trying to think of which one it was it might have been James James Eads one of James Eads Kickstarters when he did the geomancy coins I, I just remember in a previous like backer updates from somebody's Kickstarter that a lot of times when you get stuff like this made, you get you have to choose your your metals, your colors, and all that kind of stuff. There's all these different like finishes or whatever you can get. Look at how perfectly like yellow this gold is. It's like a very like bright yellow gold, and it is so fitting for this deck and this character. It literally feels like it could be like metal honey or something. But it's really, really cute. And we've got actual poo here with a honey pot as the heads. I'm assuming that's the heads. And then for the tails, we have Eeyore getting his tail put back on and it says, oh bother. And oh my God, this makes me so happy. So the quote on the front says, a day without a friend is like a pot without a single drop of honey. So that's what it says on the head side, which is really sweet. And then on the oh bother side, which I'm assuming is the tail side, because of course it's Eeyore and Eeyore's tail, which is brilliant actually. It says, it's not much of a tail but I am sort of attached to it. And then it says, oh, it says Wisdom of Pooh up top. So that is what the tail side looks like. Now for comparison, holy cow, y'all, the detail on this coin. So let me show you a couple of my other divination coins that I'm, I have handy, just to show you how freaking impressive I think that this is. So I have here, this is the coin that came with the Alley Man Tarot. So we don't have, I mean, there, that says fate. And that says something there, but I can't really read it very well. And then on the back, there's like a building and I'm not quite sure what that says. 
you can probably see on the camera, but I can't see with my naked eye what that says. Versus this, where I can pick out like every, oops, where I can pick out like the, the quote, I can actually read it. Do you know what I mean? Like if you see, and you can also see here what I mean when I talk about the colors of metals and the different finishes, right? So that's that one. This one, I don't know what deck this came with, has some words as well, but there's something about the design that also makes it really hard for me to read. Okay, so it says, a, de um, um, a decline of fortune on one side, yeah, um, is worth a cask of wisdom. That's cool. And then on this side, it says, um, a company, a company by fortune, something of led by virtue and spirit accompanied by fortune. So there's, again, quotes, but I don't know why. It's probably just that this design is also pretty intricate, but I just have a harder time reading the words. Like it, it's readable. It's good. These are all nice quality coins. I'm not dissing any of these for clarity, but I really like, and this is, I would say these two are now my top, my absolute favorites. They're a similar size. I like this size. I also like when they feel less bumpy. That's one thing about the Alley Man. It feels really bumpy. I don't know how to describe that. Like it sits perfectly flat. I don't know what it is, but I like this feeling. I don't know, not me being a snob about coins, but this is the Oak Ash and Thorn divination coin, which is also just super sweet and super detailed, but like they both just fit their respective decks so well. I don't, I love coins. There's something so tactilely satisfying about it. I just, I can't. Anyways, I clearly keep them. I clearly use them. I actually keep them in a little tin with my, um, with some divination dice that I use with my pendulums. And I really, really, really like having my coins. So Pooh's gonna live, oh, I'll keep it out for now, but that's gonna go in there at the end. Also, I really like that it came in this nice protective sleeve. Like if you wanted to put this like in with your deck, for example, having the little sleeve on it, I think would keep it from like digging up your deck. Not that I think it would, it's all smooth edges, but it's just, it's just a nice, it's a very nice touch. Anyway, not me just babbling about all the things. Okay, I've clearly taken things out of their plastic. Y'all, I have no chill, but look at this bag. It's like a soft velvet material, Wisdom of Pooh. It does not feel, um, it feels custom printed on the fabric. It doesn't, it's not like screen printed or what's that called when you add the, it's not got vinyl or anything on it. It's got a nice ribbon and it's a nice size. Look at the size. We're gonna check it with the deck later. Uh, and then there's also a cloth. This one, I must have put this back in the plastic because I remember taking it out of the plastic at one point. And it's the same design, Pooh with the umbrella. It's a square, it looks like it's probably, I don't know, 15 by 15 or so. Look at how cute. And this comes with the Christopher Robin box set, which is pretty delightful. I, I really like cloths like this that have a little bit more um, weight to them. I'm not as much a, a fan of the really silky ones because I feel like whenever I go to pick up my cards, the cloth kind of comes with it, but these have enough weight and like substance that they kind of stay put when you put your cards down. And then there is stickers. So these I did keep in their plastic just to keep them from getting messed up, but we have some, it looks like a full set. Is it just the majors? Actually, let's let, I'm gonna open it because this is the actual tarot card images. And I, I don't think that the stickers come in the box set. In fact, I think these next few things don't come in the box set. Um, so make sure you read your product descriptions well to make sure you know what you're getting. Okay, so this is a single sheet, but these feel, these have a nice like feeling to them. So is it just all the majors? I think it's all the majors. I can't tell. Yeah, I think it's all the majors. So it's a sheet of stickers of the majors. That's a nice little, thing to include. I'm wondering if it comes with the journal because the journal's coming up. So, oh, let's turn it around. No, I'm just, now that it's out of the plastic, it's just not gonna wanna go back in. And then we have moon phase and where's the little, the little flippy dippy thing. There it is. We have moon phases and suit symbols, which is real cute. So the suit, the pentacles look like they're little chocolates that have wrapping, which is so cute. That's really adorable. This is so fun. They So they've got wooden swords for their minor arcana and there's a project I'm working on now that has wooden swords in the sword suit. So that's kind of fun. That is so cute. Oh my God. Okay, cool. And then the, the, the journal itself has that soft touch um, feeling to it. Like it's got that little bit of a, what do we call that? I guess soft touch or rose petal finish to the cover and then this gold foiling detail, it's spiral bound. 
and it's a bullet journal style. So we have this journal belongs to, and then we have bullet journal pages. So that's nice with the stickers. That's cool. And now we have the decks. Okay, first things first, because I, I, I really want to know. I'm pretty sure this is going to fit perfectly in the bag. And y'all, because I hang my stuff on the wall, I'm really stoked about this. Look at it, it's perfect. Look how perfect that is. So I can literally hang it on its wall, on the wall in its own bag. And I am super stoked. So that's awesome. I'm going to set the bag aside. I'm going to set all the goodies aside because we're going to be getting into the cards here in a minute. So we have the full size deck. And then we have the standard, excuse me, the mini size in a tin. And oh my gosh. So the full size has gold detailing on the box. But can we talk about the tin? Like for real. I don't think I've ever seen a tin this nice. So I have a bunch of other decks in a tin. Granted, these are mass market. I don't know if I have any indies in a tin right now. I've had indies in a tin, but they all have this kind of a tin, right? Where you have this kind of like lip. I don't know if you can see it kind of three-dimensional. See how the lip sticks out to the side? I have never seen a perfectly smooth, seamless tin. What's an, oh, I do have an indie deck in a tin. What am I thinking? I have my little cryptid oracle. Hold on, let's just double check because their tin is really nice too. But I think theirs also has the lip. Yeah, see, so theirs also has a lip. Now on one hand, I'm like, that's kind of nice because you can lift it off. This is what I expect when I see a tin. Like every tin I've ever had has this lip on it. And it's kind of thing that like you don't think about because they're all like that. And yet the wisdom, I gotta put these back now. The wisdom of the poo one is perfectly smooth and it's so like nice to hold. There's nothing sticking out, but the lid comes off perfectly easy. I was so impressed when I first pulled this out of the box and felt this tin. It just seems really, really high end. This feels more luxury, I feel like, in some ways than other tin de tinned decks I've held. It just feels like really well done. So I was really excited about the tin for sure. So we have this scene, same kind of cover, same cover design on the box. First edition 2023, it says there. Created by Serafina and Angel Mes Mesa. I'm so sorry, y'all. Illustrated by Cat L. Ansel. So the box sides are different and the box, box and tin back are different. But that's what we're looking at for those. And then the insert in the box. And oh my God, I, didn't look, I haven't done that yet. That's cool. Look at the illustration on the inside. I like when the trays like this are removable because then you can repurpose the box any way you want. You can turn it into a keepsake. Like what if you collect poo memorabilia and you want this to be like your poo memorabilia box where you keep your tin and your deck and you keep your extra poo goodies in here. I mean, I don't know. It's really beautiful. That's, that's interesting that they even thought to do that because how many people are going to think to pull this out and actually see that? That's the kind of attention to detail that I really impresses me, to be completely honest. So this tray, I should have shown you this while I had it out. This is a sturdy tray. There's no, it's not cardboard. It's got like a firmness to it. It's plastic, but it's flocked. So it has like a velvety feel here. It's very, very nice. So everything is kept nice and safe and obviously is going to ship really securely. I can't remember because I pulled everything out of its plastic, like how it originally came out. I think everything had... There was obviously some protection. I just don't remember what it looked like. And I know the outside of the whole entire thing came in a really nice um, air column bag. So everything was very, very well protected. So that was good. So let me pull all of this stuff out. Also, uh, before I forget, be sure and stay watching until the very, very end because I may have a little surprise somewhere in here for you. And I'm not going to tell you when it's, it might be in the middle, might be at the end. Just stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> so not me playing games. Listen, I... I've got to amuse myself somehow. I just, I really like this box. And my, my, my dilemma now is I wanna put this on a shelf somewhere because it's so damn cute, but here we go. All right. So we're gonna talk about the production quality of the mini first because then when we go card by card, I know that I'm gonna want to focus on the standard. So actually, let's be nerds together. Let me just lay out the cloth. Oh, something else really nice about heavier fabrics is that either really, really heavy fabrics or really, really light fabrics is that you can often smooth out any wrinkles right away. Look at that. Look how nice that is. Okay, anyways. So in the mini, I believe there was a sleeve wrapping around the cards. Again, I take all that stuff off beforehand just so that I can be ready for the video. 
So in here we have a certificate of authenticity which has been hand numbered. Somebody did that. Somebody sat down and wrote the numbers on all of these. Uh, 2023 edition print. It's all gold foiled, really fancy and has the deck number. So I'm deck number 0808 for my mini. And then there's another card on here. I think this is so beautiful. So on one hand, we have a blessing from Serafina Mesa. And then we have a prayer from Angel Mesa. So Angel is Christian identified, and I believe that Serafina is more pagan identified or more eclectic. And I love that. I love that. I love that they both, and they both actually have a blessing and a, a warning about those with bad intentions, which is very interesting. So they've obviously really thought about protection and all of that with this deck as well, which is really beautiful. So let's set that aside. So we have gold gilding. I think, I feel like there was a, and I don't remember what the story is, but I remember that there was talk of yellow like painted edges. And I have to admit, I was kind of hoping for that version. I don't remember what happened though. I'm, I'm assuming that they sort of upgraded to this, gore, this gorgeous gold. I just wanna see if it matches the coin and it does. Look at that color wise. It's that same yellowy gold that we see on the, the um, coin that I said reminded me of like metal honey or something. It's got that, that tone to it. So that's really nice. It's quite a thick mini. Let me see another, just like, let me grab another, actually, let me grab another indie mini because this is probably a more fair, oh, nope, let me just dump another indie mini all over the ground. Like I legitimately just, just dropped this on the ground. <laughs> this is the Tarot of Oneness mini by Robin Voicey. I just wanted to see how it compared size wise. I think this is pretty close to what the size of my mini is gonna be. And I think, oh no, these seem pretty much almost identical. I would say Wisdom of Pooh is a touch thicker. This is not a scientific test, y'all, for real. <laughs> but that gives you like a rough idea. So if you know the Tarot of Oneness mini, let's just, just shuffle it really quick so we can get a few. Some of my cards are upside down now because I totally spilled it all over the floor. So it's tiny bit stiff. The Tarot of Oneness is, but that is, I don't know why I'm shuffling this deck. Why am I shuffling this deck? Anyways, so you can see kind of thickness wise, that looks like it's pretty classic for a mini, an indie mini. All right, let me put the tin aside so that's not distracting us for a minute. Let's actually, since I'm not gonna do a card by card flip through of the mini, this cardstock is linen but it's a matte linen. Let's do a little shuffle of this since I'm gonna be doing a, not gonna be doing a card by card of the mini, I'm gonna be doing, oh, let's take out the keyword cards. I'm gonna be doing a card by card on the full size. So I can actually shuffle this and we'll see how this card stock compares to the standard. I'm, I'm assuming, oh, that's got a nice, that's got a nice bend to it. Look at the mix, first out of the gate. Now by comparison, let me show you how because like size, like length and width wise, this feels like it's the same size as the, um, pretty close to the same size as this Tarot of Oneness mini. Now I love this deck, do not get me wrong, but it is a little bit stiffer. So I just kind of want to show you the difference. So that was how I shuffled just brand new right out of the box. Now I have used this one a bit, so it's a little broken in, but this is the Tarot of Oneness mi mini. Yeah, it's a little bit more standard. I still get a great mix on it. It's not standard, it's a little more stiff. I still get a great mix on it though and a shuffle, but it doesn't have quite, it's not as easy to bend. So I couldn't tell you what the difference is exactly because I think these are actually a very similar-ish cardstocks. This has got that like um, matte, liquid matte coating on it, probably UV matte, I'm guessing. And this also doesn't feel like it has any kind of lamination because of course it's got linen texture to the cards, which is that like embossing on the surface. There's something about the quality of this artwork uh, with a linen embossing on it that really makes it feel like you're holding little pieces of art, almost like little canvases. And I really like that. Yeah, this feels surprisingly like flexible given its thickness and its size. Cause a lot of times when you get a mini at this size, when you go to shuffle it, it just feels a little too stiff, but actually it's pretty decently, 
Oh, that was totally user error. Hold on, let's try that again. And sometimes the gilding makes it feel stiffer too, but it's actually holding up and doing a good bend. And I'm getting a good mix every time and it's going back together really nicely. So that's really good. Cause a lot of times with matte cardstocks, even though they don't, matte doesn't, oh, that actually fanned beautifully. I was just gonna say, when you're first fresh with a matte deck, even a matte linen, a lot of times it doesn't, it doesn't fan, it clumps, but this actually fans beautifully right out of the box. That's exciting. When I first touched this, I was feeling it and it felt like it was going to like, see, when you're holding it in your hands, it seems like it's going to clump a lot. And I really thought it was gonna be a clumpier shuffle just because of the matte finish. But when you actually put it through an actual shuffle and bridge, oh, I even got a whistle. Yo, did you hear that? Hold on, let's bring it to the mic. Not me being a total nerd, hold on. Y'all, I'm such a geek about this shit right now. You just, I mean, I'm always a geek about it, but did you hear the whistle? That's exciting. Okay, that's that's the little air pockets that the linen creates. So it's got some good snap. I believe this is a like art paper style stock and I think it's 350 GSM. In fact, let's just double check, but it's got that linen finish on it. And I believe that Serafina mentioned to me that these, I don't know if this was on the campaign page, but these are actually printed on recyclable Recycled paper, recycled cardstock with plant-based inks. So it's an eco-friendly printing as well. And it feels really nice. I, I really, when I first touched it, was like, I don't know, man. It's not going to really give us that linen experience, but it, it definitely, at least in the mini, is. And usually if one's going to be stiff at this thickness, it's going to be the mini where you're going to notice it the most. What was I going to do? I was going to check and see if we knew. I was going to check the campaign page to see if we knew, oh, what the... GSM was? I think it's 350. I think it's 350. Is my... Wait. Okay, I can't, I can't find it right now, y'all. But I just want to keep shuffling this, which is impressive for a mini. Okay, let's actually check the size of this against the Tarot of Oneness Mini. So it's a little bit wider. I don't know if you can tell that. It's a little bit wider. This is probably going to be an easier way to tell. And a little bit taller than the Tarot of Oneness. And compared to, say, the Light Seer's Tarot Mini, which is a mass market, we can see it is just wider. Let's see if I can show you the difference here. The thing about minis is that they are very inconsistent in their sizing just because every printer has their own like size that they kind of do for minis. Um, but yeah, that's a really nice, that feels really nice to shuffle. I'm impressed because usually as soon as I felt how thick it was, I was like, oh, I don't know. Cause sometimes like I do struggle sometimes to shuffle even this one cause it's a little bit thicker, but this does shuffle well. All right, so let's get into, now that I've shuffled the crap out of the mini, Oh, I should probably check and see how easy it is to read the titles. Oh, it's really easy to read. And even though these have borders around them, which are really charming because they've got that like watercolor, like real border that a watercolor painting would have, even though it's got that, it does not feel hemmed in. The artwork doesn't feel like it's hemmed in or crunched in even on the mini. And we have quite a bit of border on top and bottom, but I really like how it turned out the way it was cropped and the titles. Yeah, so there's the Hierophant. Oh, I can't wait to look at it card by card. Okay, so let's put the mini away so I can stop playing here. There are keyword cards that come with both the mini and I'm pretty sure the standard edition as well. So I'm gonna pop those on top so I don't lose track of them and the little certificates. That's a very satisfying tin. Yeah, I really like that. Okay. Let's look at this standard size. So we have gold foil details on the box and it's my favorite type where it's magnetic and it opens up. Y'all know I like the ones that open up all the way. It's, I don't know why I'm weird about that. It's just a thing. But this has got a bit of the map just like the big box did where we see a little bit of the 100 acre wood. I zoomed us in so we can see this better, but we have gold foil detailing here. We have the magnetic open box. We have the 100 acre wood on the inside. I love the really pretty sky blue here. It's gorgeous. We have a ribbon lift out, which is awesome. Oh, and then on the inside of the bottom, we have the hermit. I'm assuming that's the hermit. That looks like the hermit. And a really nice yellow book, or not bookmark, what is that called? A ribbon? 
All right, and then we have the deck itself. We have the same certificates that we had in the little tin version of the deck. The same gilding, the same keyword cards at the back. All right, so the keyword cards have the title and then it looks like three keywords or key phrases for every card. So we have a card for the majors, card for honey pots instead of cups. Oh, cute, I'm assuming that's cups, yeah. Chocolate pentacles instead of pentacles. Swords for the minor swords and then wands. So we have swords, wands, honey pots, and chocolate pentacles. That's really cute. Okay, so key phrases. These are really great for quick reference for you if you're doing a reading and you just don't remember what a card means. So that's really great for, especially if you're newer to tarot and you're just picking this up. Same backings. I don't know if I showed the backings before. And then the same gilding. So this feels like the exact same card stock. Sometimes the minis are a little thinner. In fact, that's usually what we see. But this actually feels, these feel the same. I mean, it's possible that the mini is a touch thinner, but I don't think so. I mean, what do you think looking at it? I don't know if I can get the camera to focus properly, but they look the same thickness to me. To my untrained eye, that's what it looks like. I love that, that tin is so satisfying. Okay, so we have the same finish. Oh, let's focus camera. We have the same finish on the cards. Same backing. We'll do a shuffle test at the end, but for now, let's just take a little tour through the cards. So the titles at the top and then the number or like the number I'm assuming, yeah, the numbers are on the bottom. So does it go that way though through the whole deck? It flips for the court card, not the court cards, the minor arcana. So minor arcana has the suit symbol at the top and then the title or the number on the bottom it looks like. But let's get into it. Okay. We have the fool with Piglet. I love that Piglet is the fool's companion. That is amazing. Very um, Rider Waite Smith here with looking up at the bright white sun. Love that. We have Rabbit as a magician, which I think is so apropos. Apropos, is that a word? Appropriate? I'm trying to be fancy now. And Pooh's peeking around the corner. That is really cute. This looks like an outhouse, but I know it's meant to be a garden shed. It's literally just where my brain went because it's like a small. But look at this, the Lemnus kit is actually, oh, sorry. See if I can get it to focus. The Lemnus kit is actually engraved above the doorway to this building there. And the there's some herbs and a little garden shovel hanging there and all the suit symbols or suit uh, implements are on the table. Owl for the high priestess. This is really great. We have pomegranates on the ground. A B and a J hanging from the tree like a handmade sign. Pooh is like literally in the background. Is Pooh going to be on every card? Because I am here for it. The moon. There's a scroll here. We're definitely following Rider Waite Smith symbology, so it's going to be very easy to follow if you know the Rider Waite Smith. Here we have Kanga, which makes a perfect empress, and I forget the little um, Joey's name. Is it literally just Joey? Is that it? That's what they're called, right? Baby kangaroos or Joey's? Is that right? The Venus symbol is engraved on the tree trunk here, tree stump here, and there's some more pomegranates visible and there's poo in the corner she even kanga has the the come on camera there we go kanga even has the little star crown there's even the right number of stars that kind of attention to detail is really cool here we have the emperor christopher robin who is fishing and there's poo in the corner i love the little peekaboo poos throughout the major so far i don't think i realized that was a thing Okay, so this is the card. This is the image that was on one of the prints, and it's Owl as the Hierophant. And it says, please, what does that say? I'm not sure what that says. There's just like Owl signs. I think it's something about knocking if if an answer it's it's written in poo script so like that like kind of classic kind of some of the letters are backwards and it's really cute it's totally on point I'm not 100% sure what it says but that's just me because I'm not wearing my glasses all right then we have precious friends for the lovers oh my god this is so wholesome this is so wholesome that is so cute and what they've done here is apples for the tree over here and instead of a flaming tree we have um, autumn leaves and then a snake curling around the base of this tree. I love the branching path. That really makes me happy because a lot of you know that I read the lover's card in a choice manner. I love that. Precious friends for the lovers is really sweet. Then we have the chariot and we have Eeyore and 
rabbit here pulling the chariot, which uh, is on little um, snow. Oh my gosh, what are those called? Like, like are they actually just called skis? It's on ski type things. There with Pooh driving the chariot. That's freaking adorable. I love it. Strength is Pooh with an elephant. Oh, I don't, I feel like I should know what this is. This like dark shadow in the front. Is it like meant to be a hole? I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, y'all, but I'm drawing a blank. Still, look at Pooh with the little lemniscuit. Oh, come on. Pooh with the little lemniscuit above his head. These are so stinking cute. I love the hermit. I love the soft um, way that the, the image blends out to white in this like arc above. I don't know why, but I love that. Sanders, store for Sanders, Mr. Sanders. That is so cute. So this is what we saw on the inside of the box before we folded it open to see the map, the, the Wheel of Fortune. And we have Christopher Robin. We have Pooh, of course. We have Piglet, Owl, and Eeyore. Justice, we see, oh, oh no. Pooh has traipsed through. He, he lost his, he was trying to get his um, kite, I'm assuming. And he has traipsed through Rabbit's garden. Christopher Robin has the justice scales on his little shirt and he's pointing. And we've got Pooh over here with some vegetables all askew. So we really see action consequence for sure happening here. This is adorable with Hanged Bear. Oh, we have some symbols engraved here on the tree. We have an ohm symbol. I want to say this is, I forget what that symbol is. Y'all, I'm spacing. And then we have Feihu, the rune. And, of course, we have the beehive. Pooh has to wait, obviously, for his honey. He can't go grab it while the bees are all a-buzzing about. In the death card, we see Pooh looking at some lightning bugs and kind of looks like he's having a conversation with this cricket, which is very interesting. We have a paper boat in the background. It's a pretty card. I like the night scene here. Christopher Robin pouring water from one boot to the other in the rain for temperance is stinking cute. It's stinking cute. Okay, what is happening here? So Pooh is dressed up. It's for Halloween. Pooh's dressed up in like a devilish costume and has gotten all tangled up in it, which is, this is like the kind of, look at Christopher Robin dressed up like an angel looking over the scene. That is adorable. This whole deck is so comforting to look at. It just really takes you to an inner child place. Here we have the tower. Aww, they're trying to hold out. I remember this scene. They're trying to hold out a little jacket or cape. I forget what that is. And catch Pooh as he falls down from the tree. Aww, this star is so cute. I love that, that they even got the little bird in the tree. Amazing. The moon. This is a very peaceful moon. I'm used to seeing more. Oh, but look in the background. Look in the background. The shadow of... The elephant, oops, in the background. Wait a minute, I am so silly. Hold on, is this supposed to be the heffalump? Am I just, am I silly? I can't remember if the heffalump was actually supposed to be an actual elephant, but I wonder if this is Pooh befriending the heffalump. I wonder if that's the kind of thing, because then we have like an elephanty kind of silhouette in the back, and I wonder if that's supposed to represent the fear of like the heffalump. I love it. All right, then we have the sun. I love that everybody's playing inside a walled garden. That's often how I sort of look at the sun. And then judgment. It looks like Christopher Robin's got angel wings and is trying to pull Pooh out of this hole he looks like he's stuck in with the help of Owl. And is that a possum behind Owl helping out? And we've also got, I can't tell from this angle. I think that's meant to be Kanga. I'm not sure. And then we have the world. They're all having a meal together. And it literally says, welcome home. Aw, it's like Pooh Corner. Aw, I love that. Okay, so we're into the miners. And this is so classic. We have a Ace of Cups. It's Honey Pots. So it's the Ace of Honey Pots. And there's Pooh. I, I, yeah, so Pooh's been in every single card. Yep, even there. Pooh's been in every single card, which is so charming. 
Like it's so charming to be able to see like how Pooh's interacting in the scene, what's happening to Pooh. You can really kind of lean into that. It makes me kind of re want to reread the Tao of Pooh and just see how that influences how I look at these cards. But anyways, I like that they even pinned or nailed down here the um, the five streams that are normally coming out of the Ace of Cups. The little lotus flowers, we got a little frog, a bird. Well, it's like the white dove, right? It's normally dropping a wafer in. Amazing. Here we have the two of water, or excuse me, two of cups, of cup, two of honey pots. I'll get it right eventually. The two of the of the watery suit, and it's Pooh and Piglet sharing some honey. That's it's. it's I'm just you're just gonna hear me say it's stinking cute a lot. Okay, I love this. One of the things I always look for in the three of cups, or in this case, the three of honey pots, is that each character is different and has a different thing that they're offering. Right. So here we have Pooh and Rabbit and Piglet, obviously all very different, and they're each offering up a pot of pot of honey, and the pots of honey are also all different colored jars. And we've got kind of an autumn scene. There's a cornucopia. There's some pumpkins, some grapes. Aw, sad Eeyore is sad and Pooh is like, hey, there's all this honey. It's almost like Pooh is bringing more and more honey trying to cheer Eeyore up and he's just having none of it. The five of honey jars or honey pots. Here we have Pooh looking into all of these jars and they seem all empty, but behind him is two totally full honey pots. Is it honey pot or honey jar? I'm going to find out when I get to the quartz. The six of honey pots, we're going to stay with pots for now, is Christopher Robin. And this book says photo album. So they're looking at old photos together. That's the nostalgia of the six we like to see. And then the seven of honey pots, very classic. We see all the different like options, but instead of money, we have honey, which makes sense because of course honey is kind of Pooh's resource, right? And then in the eight of cups, Pooh sailing away on the upside down uh, umbrella. The same thing we see here, which is really cute. All of these honey pots are all stacked up up here on the branch. And Christopher Robin is watching Pooh sail away or row away. The nine, okay, so y'all know I'm, it's usually a dude with a bunch of wine. So I'm already happy. It's Pooh with a bunch of honey, which I think is great. Especially because honey in this deck represents the like emotions, the same thing that the cups represent. And then we have the 10 of honey pots and we have a rainbow. I love this because there's a puddle and you can literally see that Christopher Robin is dressed in a rain coat with rain boots. And you can feel that the idea of this is that he's like, look, even though it's just rained and like we were maybe all miserable because it was raining, now there's a rainbow. And I like this because it reminds us that the rainbow in the 10 of cups is more beautiful because it's been raining. Like that's what makes a rainbow. It brings us back to, I think that more optimistic view of the card, which is nice. <gasps> My significator, the page of honey pots is literally talking to a fish and obviously getting some love from the fish. That's stinking adorable. The Knight of Honey Pots. So Christopher Robin is helping Pooh reach his honey, which is what he really wants. Here we have Kanga with, is it Joey? Y'all, what is his name? Did he have a name? I can't remember now. Anyways, the Queen of Honey Pots. And then the king of honey pots is Christopher Robin. I mean, we've got limited care. Here's the thing about the stories, right? There's a limited number of characters. So I know we're seeing a lot of repeating characters, but that doesn't bother me because this, the stories only have a handful of characters to begin with. So I don't mind seeing the same characters showing up in all the different cards. This makes sense to me. I would, I would assume we're going to see Christopher Robin in, in all of the king cards, right? And we're probably going to see Kanga in all of the more feminine presenting cards. So like the empress, the high, well, I guess she wasn't the high priestess but she was the empress um, and she might, we might see her as the queen always, right? So I'm okay with that. Here's the ace of pentacles and these remember are little chocolate candies, which is just kind of cute or chocolate, um, gold wrapped chocolate, foil wrapped chocolate. So this is Pooh outside Mr. Sanders door looking at a big golden pentacle above the garden. Pooh trying to balance as he walks across this um, fallen tree. There's a lemon skit right down there, right down there. Uh, and a giant rooster who looks like he might throw him off balance or startle him. I don't know. He's looking back at the rooster like, what do I do? Um, and then we've got two little boats also with a bit of a lemniscate. If you look carefully in the water, there's a lemniscate pattern going around the, the boats as well. But the three, okay. I freaking love when we see 
like lemonade stands, newspaper stands. I really like it when it shows up in like the page, but it's really cute here in the three. They're clearly all working together to build this stand, this stand with Rabbit where Rabbit can sell all of his produce and the things he's been growing in his garden. So we have Pooh, Piglet, and Rabbit in this card and they're all working together, which is so cute. All right, the four of pentacles is Owl watering some plants indoors where it's nice and secure and safe. I really like Owl in this card because he does have that energy of like, don't mess with my stuff. Like, don't don't touch my stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna keep, keep guard of it. So I think he works energetically really well for this card. And then we have Pooh and Piglet outside in the snow, outside the house with the five pentacles on it. Classic five of pentacles imagery. I love that we get a little Christmas. This is such a sweet deck to have a little bit of Christmas in. I don't know, it just really works. So here we have Christopher Robin and Eeyore and Pooh and Piglet all enjoying a really nice gift giving. This is really great. One of my favorite keywords for this card is like reciprocity or giving. We see the scales kind of be tipping, you know, in the background. And there's this idea of like giving back or giving to one another that we can really tap into with this card. And Christmas is such a great representation of that energy. Here we have Rabbit looking over his um, bush here to see how the garden is growing in the Seven of Pentacles. It's kind of funny, these cards are matte, uh, but they're still doing just a little bit of that moving around thing. And it's, it's I swear to gosh, you guys, it's really funny because when I first pulled this deck out of its packaging, I was like, these aren't gonna um, slide really well. I know I mentioned this when I was playing with the mini, but you can clearly tell that there's good movement between the cards just because of the way they're behaving. And I, I like that because it means it's gonna shuffle really nicely. So here we have the Eight of Pentacles and everybody's got, oh my God, it's Pooh flipping pancakes. What a great representation for like repetition and perfecting. Because if you've ever made pancakes, you know that the very first one you put down isn't great. And like the best ones always come near the end when you've been doing it for a bit and you kind of got your rhythm going. And like here, Pooh is making like flipping pancakes for all of his friends. That's so freaking cute. I love that energy for the Eight of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles, this is brilliant. I wanna find our RWS card just so I can show you how brilliant this is. Hold on. They had to think of this, y'all. I just cannot. Like, I'm always so impressed when people work symbology in in such a cool way. I'm gonna grab the cleanest version of the RWS I have, which is the original tarot by Debr Debray. You gotta see this, because this is so smart. So let me just find the Nine of Pentacles real quick, if I didn't already miss it, because that's the kind of thing I would do. Like, they've really stayed true to the Rider Waite Smith, but in a really cool way here. There it is. Okay, this is such an often overlooked detail in the Nine of Pentacles, but it's really cool that it made it into this card. Um, so in the classic Rider Waite Smith Nine of Pentacles, if you look very closely down at the bottom, there is a little, I mean, it is tiny. There's a little snail. Oh my gosh, is the card even, is it even gonna focus? There's a tiny little snail crawling across the ground in front of the Knight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles, sorry. Look at the rug at Kanga's feet. It is a snail-shaped rug. Also, just appreciate for a moment the colors, the fact that the dress is the right dress. There is so much attention to the Rider Waite Smith detailing in this card. They did a really, really beautiful job. The, the snail rug is inspired. I think that's so great. And it takes something that's such a tiny, tiny detail on the classic and makes it more obvious. So I bet there's people that are gonna be like, why is there a snail on the Nine of Pentacles? And they might look it up and be like, oh, that's why. The deep dive book for this deck is gonna be really fun because they've clearly put thought into this, like a lot of thought into the symbology of the deck to have nailed such a tiny detail that I think a lot of people don't even know is there. So like major props for that. That's awesome, I love that. All right, so now we have the Ten of Pentacles, and I love how everybody's all li like like lined up here. All the characters, they're all together, and we have the pentacles in the tree. We have the tree all dressed up in, uh, what do you call that, bunting or whatever you call the, the de garland, <laughs> the decorative stuff. Love that for the Ten of Pentacles. So the page is Rabbit, which I think is great for this deck. Uh, working in his garden, just being like steadfast and like, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um diligent in his work of the garden, really taking care of things, which is total page energy. The knight is on a carousel horse and it's still rabbit. Is it rabbit for both of these? Yes, rabbit for the page and rabbit for the knight. But as you can see, the um, carousel horse isn't going very far. I'm curious what they do with the other, the, not all the knights are on horses or anything. No, no, they're not. Cause that'd get like kind of like repetitive, right? But the knight here is actually Christopher Robin lifting up 
the little knight, Winnie the Pooh knight. Oh, I just realized, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So Pooh, of course, is present in most of the honeypot cards. Sorry, we did divert and I forgot to pay attention. So Pooh is in pretty much almost all of the honeypot cards with the exception of the queen and the king. Um, but not necessarily, which makes sense because they're honeypots. Of course, Pooh's going to be all over that, right? But when it comes to the, this is actually kind of funny when you think about it. When it comes to the more hardworking cards <laughs> of the pentacles, Pooh's in a lot of them, in a lot of them, but not in every single one. So we see that it's not like this formula that they're necessarily trying to follow. Pooh shows up when it makes sense. It doesn't necessarily show up in every card. Here we get, I already talked about this, the knight. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we have the queen, we have Kanga again, which again, I already mentioned, I'm completely fine with. Here, she's got chocolate, but she's surrounded by all of this foliage. She's got her little joey in her, in her pouch. That's really cute. Is that a tiny Capricorn symbol on her crown? Are you kidding? Wait, it is though. Does that mean there's an astrological symbol? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I don't see it. Oh no, I'm sure it's there because there's a little Capricorn there. And on the king, we have a Taurus symbol where we have Christopher Robin as the king. I love this. Up with his like, in his like tree castle, his tree house castle with the grapes. Like the symbology is here, y'all. That's amazing. Now I want to know about the honeypot quartz. Okay, so we don't see an astrological symbol there. I just wonder if it's built in here. There's a fish on Christopher Robin's shirt. I don't see one on the queen. So it just might be a little nod in the earthly suits. I'm not sure. It also could just be that I don't know where to look and I'm not spotting it. And sometimes those things are kind of like little Easter eggs. Anyways, we're into the sword suit and I freaking love the color of the sky in this one. It's so beautiful. Look at this. There's our ace of swords. I love that in the Two of Swords, Piglet is like, gotta walk the plank. So it's like, do I jump or do I go back to the safe, the safety of the pirate ship? That's really cute. With the little two swords crossed over Piglet's heart. That's freaking adorable. Very well thought out. Also, Skull and Crossbones has similar um, symbology, which is interesting. This is cute. It could have just been, y'all, a heart with three swords cutting through it. And instead, they actually made a proper scene here, which I think is great. Piglet's obviously um, dealing with having a bit of a tough day. <laughs> so we really get that here. I love that we get a, a more zoomed in look at Piglet. Okay, the Four of Swords is Christopher Robin and Pooh and Eeyore as Christopher Robin is nailing the tail back onto or pinning the tail back on the donkey. <laughs> oh boy. And then in the Five of Swords... Oh, they've all gotten capsized. Their little ship has capsized and they've all come in and they're all wet and King is there with towels to dry them off. That's really cute. The six is Christopher Robin and Kanga and I'm just going to keep calling him Joey, y'all, because I cannot. Please comment below if he has a name. I, I, I feel like such a bad Pooh fan. I'm not, like, I've loved the Pooh stories, but I would never say that I'm any kind of an expert on them at all. Not by a long shot, but I don't, I don't know if he has a name. That's a cute image for the Six of Swords, though. I don't know if I commented on that, but it's really cute. Okay, now we have the Seven of Swords. Okay, so they're all having a picnic, totally unaware, while, is that Joey or Kanga in the back is, like, taken off with a bunch of, a bunch of swords? That's kind of funny. Leaving two behind up front. Cute. This is so adorable for the Eight of Swords, but I also think it speaks to some of the defeated energy we experience when we're in an Eight of Swords moment. Oh, there's Christopher Robin's castle house in the back. I love that. It's got to be the Heffalump because every, t yeah, it's got to be the Heffalump. The elephant has to be the Heffalump. Am I dumb? Did I just not know that the Heffalump was meant to be an elephant? Did I not know that? <laughs> Why do I feel dumb right now? Anyways, clearly that is showing up in everybody's like fears, nightmares, etc. We're seeing that that symbol. So that's great. Here we have uh, Pooh, who is trying to sleep, but whose mind is obviously full. It's kind of actually feels like Pooh is asleep and it's a bad dream, which is a really kind of neat way to look at the Nine of Swords. And then the Ten of Swords, Piglet's having a very bad day being all pinned up there, but Piglet's fine. He's fine. Okay. The Page of Swords is Christopher Robin climbing up to get this banner which looks like it might have taken off and gotten caught up in the treats the hunger hundred acre wood sign the knight of swords is piglet riding an owl or maybe it's meant to be the owl cute the queen of swords we have kanga as well and christopher 
Robin and Pooh and Piglet are all playing here at the bottom. And then the King of Swords is Owl, which may, again makes so, so much sense. I love the little bow tie on his like little chest shield. So cute. He's, they're all armored, which is adorable. All right, that brings us to the Wands suit, which in this deck is just positioned near the back. We have Piglet as the Ace of Wands, which I love. Looks like he's going on a little journey. There's Christopher Robin's um, castle house in the back again. For the Two of Wands, we have Christopher Robin up high, looking out over the landscape, looking at maybe consulting a map of some kind. And then in the three, they're looking at these ships either going out or coming in, depending on how you view this card. There's Pooh and Piglet in the foreground. Looks like they're hoisting a sail for their own departure, which is so perfect for how I view this card, actually. I love that. If it wasn't for this, I'd be like, this is kind of a stereotypical look at the three of wands, right? It's perfectly on point for the theme. But then you add the hoisting of the sail over here to the side. At least that's what I'm imagining they're doing. And now we know that they're preparing for their own trip out, which really, really works for the way that I view the three of wands. And I really like it. Okay, this is cute. It's the four of wands and it looks like they're having like a maypole dance and they're and Christopher Robin's acting as the maypole. I think some people might look at this card and have the immediate like gut reaction of like this is being tied up like we would see in like the eight of swords or maybe even the devil card, that bondage idea. But that's not what's happening here. They're not like tying him up. Well, they're, they're ending up tying him up, but he's acting as a, a physical representation of a maypole, which is so cute for the four of wands. Oh my God. I like am dying over freaking potato sack races for the five of wands. This is perfection because I often see the five of wands as like a bit of a competition, but it's friendly. It's not necessarily like we're not fighting. We're, there's competing going on. And this is such a perfect and adorable representation. Okay. Comment below if you've ever actually, if you have a memory of ever racing in a potato sack race, because do they even do that anymore? Is that a thing? Is that a thing that people still do? Because it was amazing. It was amazing. That's so cute. All right, then we have the Six of Wands, where we have success. We have Pooh up here on Christopher Robin's shoulders wearing the laurel leaf crown. Everybody's like, yay, Pooh. And this says, North Pole discovered by Pooh. Pooh found it. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, and then for the Eight of Wands, which is where we get that kind of momentum going, it says he climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And as he climbed, he sang a little song to himself. Oh my God, that's so cute. Wait. I said this was the Eight of Wands. This is the Seven of Wands. I'm dumb, y'all. This is the high, the high ground card. Here's the Eight of Wands. And we have Piglet riding on a bunch of wands, shooting through the sky. A lot of times this card gets a bit phoned in. And we, we often see this card like absent of characters. And I love that we got Piglet kind of being swept away by the wands. I think that's a really cute addition. And it, it makes us feel, I, I, I don't know. I feel like this is a card that can get boring. And this keeps it from being boring, which I love. And then the Nine of Wands. Pooh just kind of like hanging in there, just hanging in there, but he's got a lot of little owies on him. Classic Nine of Wands. Oh, the defeated. I love that Eeyore shows up in the cards where you could just practically hear his voice, like like his defeated energy. Like, of course, I, I can't quite make it to the end, but he's so close, but he's kind of giving up here under the weight of everything. There's a lot here to work with as a tarot reader, and that's very exciting. I, I haven't looked at any of these cards and been like, oh, if I pulled this out for like a client reading, I'd struggle. I don't think I'd struggle at all. And it gives me enough extra that it doesn't just feel like like a writer Waite Smith clone, even though the symbology is all there, which is, these are kind of the criteria for things I like about tarot decks that really strongly follow the writer Waite Smith is give me enough to play out, outside of just the basic like interpretation, outside of just the basic illustration. And this does that, which I love. So we have the page of wands is drawing the um, alchemical symbol for fire. This is the same, uh, it's, it's, it's the square. <laughs> There's a, there's a term for this. It's the same symbol that's on the front of the chariot and it's on the temperance card angel at the center. That's the symbol that's being drawn. But if you want to look at it outside of that lens, you can just look at it as as the um, little Joey here is drawing a alchemical symbol for fire on the ground next to a campfire. And we have little salamander carvings going up the tree, which I love that we get some autumn leaves through this suit as well. The Knight of Wands. This cracks me up, actually. So this is Pooh riding Eeyore. That's interesting because normally I would think of, like, this is a very fast, dynamic, active card, and I don't see Eeyore's energy as quite that dynamic and active, but I also don't see Pooh's energy as that dynamic and active. So maybe when the two join forces, they can, like, encourage each other to be more dynamic and active. That's how I think I'm probably going to view that card. Here we have the Queen of Wands. We have Kanga with the cat. Love it. Indoors. 
gosh, the way, oh, and there's poo outside the window. Oh my gosh. The King of Wands being Owl again works for me. Oh, and then we have our extra cards. Okay, so we have El Fulio, which is an alternate Fool card. That's fun. So here's our original Fool and here's El Fulio. And then we have 23. So we had, oh wait, is this 20? Hold on. No, that's numbered zero. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So we have 22, 23, and 24. So these are the, the next three. It's like the Major Arcana has been extended. So we have Pure Joy, which is amazing. I love that as an extra card. We have Bravery, which is also amazing as an extra card. And then we have Togetherness. Oh, I love this. This is such, oh my God, who's floating? Who's floating? Is that Eeyore floating on the bottom? That's adorable. I cannot. Okay, so let me put the Fulio away because I'm definitely going to shuffle these all together. So let's do a test shuffle. I'm going to zoom us out. We're going to do a test shuffle and we'll also do a fan and see just how this deck feels. I know you're going to see my other background behind, but that's okay. We're just going to roll with it. I promised a surprise and here it is. Inside this packet, which I have not opened, is a Wisdom of the Pooh coin, a I keep saying Wisdom of the Pooh. I'm sorry, y'all. I probably will never break the habit. A Wisdom of Pooh coin, divination coin, a Wisdom of Pooh bullet journal, spiral bound, a sheet of the Major Arcana stickers and the Moon stickers with suit symbols, a set of the prints that were done for the deck, and of course, the little promo card that talks about uh, the next products coming out from Ruin Vervain. This little goodie pack, which includes all of this stuff, is still wrapped up in its plastic right here because I received an extra one when I received this deck for review. So what I'm gonna do is do a giveaway of this cute little kit here of all the little Wisdom of Pooh goodies to one of you. So if you wanna enter to win, it's super simple. Leave a comment down below with the keyword honey. So you can use the word honey, no hashtag, nothing fancy, just the word honey somewhere in your comment, H-O-N-E-Y, and I will draw sometime in the next couple of weeks. Things are a little crazy, so if you don't see me draw, if you don't see the draw or the winner announced or whatever, send me a message or nudge me. I promise I will do it. But I will draw and I will send this little goodie bag off to a lucky winner. So drop that comment with the word honey down below. Don't forget, unicornfam5 is the discount code if you want to get $5 off a Wisdom of Pooh purchase from the Ruin Vervain web shop. And thank you so much. Back to my ramblings about the deck. You can hear that sort of zippery sound of the linen. Oh, it's it's kind of soft, like in a nice way. It's got a bit of a soft bend to it when you go to shuffle it. So it doesn't feel stiff. A lot of times, I think they said it was 350 GSM art paper with a linen finish. I'm pretty sure it's what the campaign said. Or maybe I just said 350 GSM paper or cardstock, but it feels really soft, but not um, flimsy. So for example, it's not floppy or slappy. <laughs> like we, like I've talked about with the Boo Tarot, that one has that like kind of floppy feeling. This doesn't feel like that at all, but it's soft. So it's, even though it's a thicker cardstock, it's comfy to shuffle. And if you look at the mix I'm getting, just like with the mini, we're getting a really nice even distribution of the cards and a really nice linen shuffle. That's lovely. I don't know about the shape of the cards, like how they'll they'll bend and recover, but so far I've given it some good shuffling and I'm not seeing a whole lot of signs. We see a little bit of, of the shape. Oops, if I hold it really loosely. You see a little bit of the shape, which is what our paper does, right? Like that's what 350 GSM standard card stock does a little bit. And sometimes the foil, weirdly, I feel like foil edging um, sometimes helps the card or allows the card to hold a little bit of a different shape. But what matters to me, and we won't know till over time, is if the card stock stays nice and like flat. It's not like trying to snap or bend. I'm not sure what the wording is I'm looking for. It's not trying to like take a new shape. Like it's not all of a sudden bowing from that shuffling that I'm doing. Let's see what a fan looks like and feels like. But the mini, yeah, the mini fanned beautifully. This fanned really nicely. I'm gonna do it again. It seemed like it clumped it a little bit at the beginning, but I think that was just user error. So let's do it one more time. I don't know why I have to shuffle it first. Like that's not at all necessary, but that's how I roll apparently. 
Look it. Okay, so I can't really show you the side, so I'm gonna just pick up a chunk and just show you. We're not clumping at all. They're very evenly spread out. They didn't clump. It feels a little bit less, just a, a hair less glidey than like a slippery linen. Uh, but I love that. That's really nice. It goes back together nicely. I'm not having to fight it. And it feels like almost like you're holding, I don't know how to describe this. It feels, something about this matte texture makes it feel more like you're holding like, I don't know, a piece of watercolor paper or something. Like it's got a bit of that vibe to it. A little birdie told me that they are considering upgrading the cardstock to German black core for the Tigger 2 edition. Oh, this is what I wanna say. This is what I wanna say. I did not back this deck initially, even though I was completely charmed by it because they, Serafina had said up front that they were gonna be doing the Tigger edition the following year. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wait for the Tigger edition. But here's the funny thing, having gone through all of these cards, I didn't miss Tigger. And I wasn't expecting that. I actually thought I was gonna be, really feel like Tigger was missing because Tigger's one of my favorite characters. But this deck does not in any way feel like there's characters missing. I didn't go through this and go, oh man, Tigger would have made a great representation for this card. I wasn't thinking about Tigger. And I really, really thought I was going to, which is the main reason I decided to wait and not pick up this version of the deck. But actually, there's something really calm and soothing. This is gonna sound bad. I love Tigger. I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. I love Tigger, but there's something about Tigger's absence that gives this deck a little bit of a calmer overall energy. It's a little bit gentler in a way than I imagine Tigger's deck will feel. Like I feel like Tigger's deck will feel more vibrant and more bouncy because Tigger's bouncy. <laughs> I don't know, is that is that stupid to say? I don't know. And so I really thought that it's like, no, nah, there's, there's no point in backing it yet because I really want the Tigger edition. And I talked about it regularly here on the channel. Like I really can't wait for the Tigger edition. And while I legitimately cannot wait for the Tigger edition, um, this version of the deck unexpectedly charmed me. I really thought it was gonna feel like it was missing something and it does not at all. To the point where I literally had made a mental note to myself to talk about how I felt about Tigger or no Tigger at the end because there's that included card talking about the Tigger 2 edition and I really wanted to address it and I literally almost forgot because I just didn't think about Tigger while I was going through this. So if that's something that you were on the fence about, that's something to consider is whether Tigger's absence will make this an unusable deck for you or if actually the opposite is true and you might have a calmer and a more vibrant version of the deck. One thing I don't know and I should have asked is if all of the card art will be new for the Tigger edition or if it will be the same scenes but just some of the cards change to include Tigger or to add Tigger back in. Like I don't I don't really know the story there but I will definitely keep an eye on their social media and see what I think because I don't know, there's just something about this that just feels very, very storybook, very loving, very calm. I'm just gonna keep flipping through cards because it's very comforting to me. But okay, I figure if I can interrupt this walkthrough <laughs> to talk about a giveaway, I can also interrupt this walkthrough to update y'all about my Kickstarter. So if you don't know, I have created the Unicorn's Journey Tarot. I'm really, really excited about it. This deck is due to hit Kickstarter. The launch party is gonna happen live here on my channel on April 20th, probably starting around 10 a.m. Pacific, earlier if I can get Peggy out of bed earlier. Otherwise, it'll be around 10 a.m. Pacific. And this is going to be so exciting. I cannot wait. So uh, the Kickstarter campaign is linked down below if you want to be notified when the, the, the actual Kickstarter goes live because I'm going to be hitting the button during my live launch party. So I can't say specifically what time the Kickstarter campaign is going to launch. You either need to be at my launch party or make sure that you sign up to get notified of the launch so you know right away because there will be a limited number of early bird rewards and I'm so freaking excited to see this deck come to fruition. And I have a little extra sneak peek for y'all today. I printed, I did this through Make Playing Cards, so this is not the final version at all, but of the current version of the guidebook. Now check this out. Look at this chunky monkey. So this is the cards, this is the thickness of the book, and I'm so excited about this. So this is uh, not, again, the final version, but I wanted a physical test print so that I can proof, uh, go through, just kind of check on things, look for any issues, and I sent one off to Dawn too so she can help me um, look for any any issues, but I'm very like I'm obscenely proud of this book. You have no idea um, This was a really scary 
endeavor for me, not the writing of it, but the designing of it. And I'm really freaking proud of coming up with a layout. I picked fonts, like I color coded the pages. If y'all remember back in the day when I was first making videos, way back then I used to always take uh, permanent markers and edge a portion of my pages in guidebooks so that they would match the color of the suit. So I did that in my own guidebook. I put purple page margins for um, the majors. I used this really pretty brick red color for the wands or the fire suit. The suit of fire in my deck is what it's called. This really pretty turquoise for the suit of water. This golden yellow for the suit of air and a really nice forest green for the suit of earth. And oh my God, y'all, y'all, I am so proud to see this in, in a physical form because I've been working on this book for so long and holding it in my hands, like it's gonna fit in the box with the cards. I can't wait. I can't wait to see how this production quality, this whole thing unfolds. But um, this is just a test print. It's a working physical copy. It's got some issues and stuff that I still have to clean up, but mostly it's done. I'm really, really, really stoked, really stoked. So I'm very, very proud of this. This just came in today. So I did take this and literally stick it on a scanner <laughs> and put a picture of it into the Kickstarter campaign page. So you'll be able to see it there too. But I wanted to show it to you because I'm so proud. So really, really freaking excited about this. I'm going to stop babbling about the guidebook now. I'm really excited about this whole thing. Keep an eye out for the Kickstarter campaign launch party, April 20th. That is a Saturday. Um, come join me, hang out on the channel for the live launch or make sure you sign up. I mean, ideally do both. <laughs> make sure you sign up for notifications for when this goes live. I could not be prouder of this entire thing. And I, I'm hoping that through the Kickstarter, it can be the best version of itself. So we'll have stretch goals and all kinds of things. So please keep your eyes out. I will shut up now. Let's get back to Wisdom of Pooh. It's a really, really sweet deck. This would be great for anybody younger or anybody young at heart, but I feel like this is the kind of story, like Pooh's been out. I think Pooh is a part of so many of our histories. Um, I love that this is based on the classic Winnie the Pooh, who I really adore. I never actually bonded with the like Disney version of Winnie the Pooh. I never really got very attached to any of the cartoons or movies or whatever. I don't, I don't even know what there was, but these illustrations or this art, art style version of Pooh, the original version of Pooh really, really just brings me back to my childhood in a, in a cozy kind of way. And not a lot of decks actually do that for me with actual nostalgia because the things that I was into or interested in as a kid, I don't know, I had kind of weird phases, but Pooh is so ingrained in my childhood that I just, it's really sweet to have a Pooh deck in hand. So really pleased about this. And it's got magnetic box. Y'all, the reason I love magnetic boxes so much is probably because I just cannot be trusted to keep track of my stuff. <laughs> like the minute I take out, um, the minute I take something out, I'm going to put the little keyword cards in the bottom here. Um, like take a lid off and put it like over here. Like I'm going to misplace it, but this, like this is really nice. I have to say just being able to put something like this together with so many moving parts for so many people is quite the feat. It's pretty impressive. And I've told Serafina that I feel like this is a lot. This is a lot. And it all came out really, really, really nice. I'm surprisingly, I, I always... I was going to say poo-poo. I always poo-poo bags that come in Kickstarter campaigns because I'm spoiled and have my own bag maker at home. But I love that this freaking fits the, the deck in its box and feels sturdy enough for me to actually hang on my wall. And I will always know what's in the bag, which is very exciting. I managed to memorize what's in all of my bags because I pick out my own fabric for them. But this is very convenient. And I feel like this would make a great, like, cozy bedtime deck or self-care deck or just inner child deck. I'm really excited about it, y'all. I feel like this is gonna work its way into client readings too for me relatively quickly. I'm not taking clients at the moment because I'm so busy with my Kickstarter, but once that opens up again, I feel like this would be a really cute one to work into client readings. I just, this tin is so satisfying. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna stop babbling. We're gonna wrap this up. Thank you so, so much for hanging out. As always, an extra, extra big thank you goes out to my unicorn fam. Speaking of unicorn fam, if you wanna get $5 off of a Wisdom of Pooh purchase of any kind, whether it's the deck, the set, the mini or the the plush, whatever. Uh, I don't know if there's a minimum purchase amount. I'm not sure, but the code is unicornfam5. I will have that down below for you. It's good until May 2nd, 2024, I believe is what it's currently running to. So that is how you get a little discount on your pre-order or your order. And thank you so much for hanging out. And until next time, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.